you hear me? Hi, everyone. Okay, great. I think I can see to the end of the room. Hello. Um, so I actually don't have this memorized, and I'm going to be reading off my phone here and there, but I'm going to try my best not to, so don't make fun of me too much. All right, so um, good evening. Happy Monday. Yes, yes, okay, cool. So in my humble opinion, um, disruptive tech to me doesn't mean creating the latest and shiniest new thing. Sometimes it means building infrastructure or renovating an old, on older systems and changing how they fundamentally, how we fundamentally work with them. So in that vein, my name is Joella and I used to be a Shopify partner. Does anyone in this room happen to know this dashboard? Anyone? Yes, there are actually other Shopify partners here. Awesome. Okay. Um, so I used to be a Shopify partner, and I used to do payments for a startup that got bought out by US Bank, which is one of the 10 largest non-commercial banks in North America. And along with my co-founder, Michael, who's in the crowd somewhere, please find him, uh, he's been a pharmacist. 10 years and a pharmacy manager as well, and we launched something called Medicist. Now, for history and context, just for a second, I'm just gonna talk about this relationship. The way we access our bank and provide payments has fundamentally changed. It's changed through disruptive technology, from online banking. A lot of you can pay for stuff with your Apple Watch, you can interact with apps, and you can pay for stuff at a local shop with this disruptive technology. So how you access healthcare is also changing. Um, but for a majority of the public, oh no, the side. So for a majority of the public, just like in banking, this change may not be the sudden spectacular shift. Maybe it's less of a revolution. Maybe it's a seamless transition from within the healthcare system, but equally revolutionary. And at Medicist, we're building a more equitable, oh no, I had backup slides in case the videos didn't work. So um, at Medicist, we're building a more equitable, accessible, and personalized healthcare system through the modernization of a very traditional channel that you all have access to, your local pharmacy. So, how are we doing that? When it comes to equi equity, during the COVID-19 vaccination campaign, and I know none of us want to go back there, so I'm going to get through this really quick, don't worry. The problem we were solving wasn't just to make it more convenient for the public to access vaccines. There was actually a very limited supply of vaccines, and no amount of technology was going to solve that problem. The problem to solving was to enable our pharmacies to shortlist or prioritize and vaccinate the most vulnerable with that limited supply. So if you were more tech savvy, so if you were more tech savvy, you could get a vaccine much easier than someone who was older, had disabilities, or couldn't work from home. And it became apparent pretty and it became apparent pretty early on that 95% of COVID-19 deaths were actually in those aged over 65. And studies have also shown that people living in the most diverse neighborhoods in Ontario, 4.1% more likely to be hospitalized and 4.9% more likely to die from COVID-19. So by giving the public instant access to vaccine booking, that problem wasn't really solved. It actually made it near impossible for public health to distribute vaccines equitably. Therefore, instead of helping fight the pandemic, fortunately in that situation, technology was helping from a public health perspective, was actually greatly contributing unequitable distribution of vaccines. So our solution is more like a national CRM, which allowed pharmacies to prioritize all their patients and vaccine requests based on age, medical conditions such as pregnancy, immune conditions, or occupation, and allowed pharmacies to reserve doses for their most vulnerable patients in their community. So if you were 70 and didn't have access to technology and you didn't have an email, well, one of our pharmacies would put you on a call list. Hello. Ooh. All right. Sorry, everyone. 
Anyway, so as I said, you would be taken care of. Now on accessibility, how many of you know that, and you can do a show of hands, how many of you know that you can walk into almost any pharmacy and get training for naloxalone kits to prevent a drug overdose for free with your OHIP card? Holy crap, that's very few people. <laughs> okay, um, I guess we're learning something tonight. And how many of you know um, pharmacies offer smoking cessation programs where a pharmacist will meet with you regularly throughout the year to help you stop smoking for free with your OHIP card? Two people, two people, great, okay. And how many of you know not to throw medications in the trash or toilet and to bring them to the pharmacy? Okay, that's a lot more, that's good. <laughs> All right, so we love working with pharmacies because they are highly trained and trusted. They're in every neighborhood. And people just don't know what they can do. And they've never had a system that's really let them scale and take that uniqueness of how accessible they are to the next level. So we love them because the work we do is incredibly scalable. So we give them access. Suddenly we're scaling a whole new healthcare system. And that's the kind of transformational change that will occur seamlessly with, without much fanfare. So what we're doing right now is helping our pharmacies transition into pharmacist-led walk-in clinics. I don't know if anyone knows this here, but for example, in Ontario, starting just earlier, well, last month, on January 1st, pharmacies are now able to assess and treat for 13 minor, condi minor ailment condition conditions. Anything from UTIs, skin infections, allergies, and in a year, it'll be natural to just go to your pharmacy for any of these things. That's the kind of transformational change that will occur seamlessly and that we're trying to facilitate. So the healthcare system is struggling in many ways, and we really think that this is the easiest way to cause systemic change, to help utilize these overlooked healthcare sites. And finally, when it comes to personalization, we mostly work with independent pharmacies, not your local banner that is on every block, but actually an independent small mom and pop store that you probably know. And each one has a unique patient demographic, usually older patients, oftentimes more rural communities, and everything is customizable for that pharmacy. Whatever they're doing that's keeping them in business, whatever community they are serving, whatever language they're using, we want them to keep that identity as they modernize. We're not trying to replace it because it's actually speaking to a certain demographic. Pharmacies can build their own email marketing campaigns, their own referral programs, newsletters. They can pick and choose whatever services they want to offer to their community. They can even in invent and create their own totally unique healthcare service. And we believe this type of personalized care is actually scalable. So our version of the future is a, is a patient journey where you're guided through a new and modern healthcare system by a real person just down the street from you. There is literally a pharmacy on every block in North America and across the world. And our version of this, of this patient journey is what we're, we're working to build at Medicist. In conclusion, at Medicist, we're changing the way the healthcare system works forever. It may not be the most glamorous or high-tech solution, but it's steady, sustainable, and we like to think incredibly disruptive. So if anyone here tonight has a healthcare solution that you think could be recommended by a pharmacist, please come talk to us. Thank you. Yep, stay up there. But let's get some questions. Questions, I'll start with the first one. Can you handle one for me? So what was the idea? how did you get the idea to start Medicist? Yeah, okay. Um, so Michael is somewhere in this crowd back there. He's a pharmacist and um, he'd been building in the space for a while, for a couple of years. And I had seen the back end of Shopify and it was very obvious. If anyone has looked at the back end of Shopify, it was very obvious that you could make a massive impact if you actually built infrastructure that everyone else was building on. Um, and then we did something that was very uncomfortable and not fun. We went walking probably like 20,000 steps a day, I think for almost eight or nine months, north, east, and west of Toronto. Every single pharmacy in the GTA probably saw our faces, um, and we harassed them. We asked them what they were interested in, 
what they liked about what we were building, how much would they pay for it. It was not fun. <laughs> we did that from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. at night every single day for almost a year. Joella, what's your most effective marketing and demand gen uh, approach? <laughs> um, calling and talking to pharmacies and fax marketing. Do you have an opinion on that, Mark? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so, the fax is not dead in healthcare. I know lots of marketing people are probably laughing over here. Um, the fax machine is always on. It's always looked at. It's, there's no way someone is not looking at a fax that's sent to a pharmacy. And so, fax marketing is how we did it. Fax marketing is how we got to our first 300 customers. One last question. One last question. What's your approach to building a team and scaling? How do you see the growth of headcount in alignment with the growth of the impact of your company? Um, we just grew from five to 15, and that feels like a lot, or a little more than that. It feels like a lot. I think our big hack is we have a lot of pharmacists on the team. Over 50% of our team are actually pharmacists. Over 70% of our team are women, because that represents what pharmacists are actually practicing. <laughs> so I think we're just slow and intentional, annoyingly slow, like very annoyingly slow, slow and intentional. And um, that's all I know so far. I, I don't know anything more than that. I'm sorry. Are they all fax experts? Yes, they are all absolute fax geniuses. When we do a fax, we put it in a Slack channel and everyone votes on it. <laughs> Wait, is that real? Yeah, absolutely. You've built a fax to Slack app? <laughs> pivot, pivot. Thank you so much.